Kia ora koutou katoa, welcome. A special welcome to those of you who are joining us on Shine TV this Sunday. Today we celebrate the 11th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Let us sing together our opening hymn, Come to the Water. Thank you, Alison, for your beautiful welcome. I too acknowledge the many people throughout the country and beyond who are joining us today uh, via Shine TV. We have uh, wonderful letters of support and thanks from uh, throughout the land, and uh, it is an honour that we uh, join you have we have you join us this morning at uh, Good Shepherd here in Belmoral in Auckland. We gather with the sign of our salvation, Kitangua o te matua te tamaiti o te warua tapu. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we stand before God, we acknowledge our need of God's grace, peace, and mercy. For the times that we miss the mark, we acknowledge our need of forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You raise us to new life in the Spirit. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are mighty God. You are Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And we praise God as we pray. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. 
you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us be mindful of the people we carry in our hearts this day. Mindful too of the many communities throughout the world that are unable to gather for Mass as we do. We pray for ourselves and the needs of our world. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. For we make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, he who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let's be seated. I invite our two readers from Good Shepherd School to come forward. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree, I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord they flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap, showing that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always confident, even though we know that while we're at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all we must, we must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, 
so that each may receive recompense for what he or she has done in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how the kingdom of God is like. It is as, as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day. And through it all, the seed would sprout and grow. How it does, he does not know. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit. First the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. Jesus said, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without the parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. When Jesus was on earth, he used to look around the countryside and think, how can I explain what the kingdom of God is like? And we hear in the gospel today, he uses the image of a seed, a little mustard seed. And he said, sometimes when you plant a little seed, you've got no idea how big the bush or the tree's going to be. I know at the moment people are looking at planting daffodil bulbs and uh, while we put them into the cold, hard earth, it's amazing to see in the springtime such beauty emerge. Recently, Sioli, who helps me in the garden, showed me about what happened when he planted something nearly six months ago. This is a kumra leaf, and he explained to me that about six months ago he peeled off the outer leaves and he planted this sort of sideways in the earth. And he said, I'll be surprised to see what emerges from the earth after it. And I thought to myself, what could possibly come from this? It looks like a weed. And you know, yesterday he said, come on, Father, put your hands in the dirt around this lot of greenery. And look what I pulled out of the ground. Who'd have guessed? And this was just from one planting. There were six kumras, and I had some for dinner last night. And I gave some to the principal last night too, so I'll be interested. But I wonder if Jesus would have used the kumra as an example of what the kingdom of God is like too. Because when we're kind to others, it's like planting a seed or a little twig 
and we never know how that goodness or kindness is going to grow into something big uh, in, in time. So when we smile at somebody, when we're kind, when we say we're going to pray for them, we never know just how it's going to touch them and how many years later people are going to remember kindness. I think for all of us as adults, as we think about our lives, we can think of people or times in our life when people have touched us with a kind word or a kind gesture or prayerful support especially. So Jesus uses images. He uses seeds a lot in Mark's Gospel. Uh, but uh, our example here today is that of the Qumra. And we might see that how uh, we journey through life by being kind and good and faithful and praying for people, how it will bear much fruit. So I'm going to leave the Qumra there to remind us. When we are baptised, we are anointed with precious oil on our foreheads. And part of the prayer that the priest says over the infant, or sometimes an older child or adult, is that they pray that the, the child or person will be uh, part of the kingdom of God, that they'll be part of the priestly, prophetic, and kingly presence of God. And part of that means that the kingdom of God, the reign of God, uh, is not something that we just look forward to at the end of time, but that we call to make as much of our here and now as we possibly can. Therein lies a great challenge for all of us. We pray your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So again, we're saying we're not just looking forward to the heavenly experience of God's kingdom, but we are called to make that kingdom part of the here and now. And we know Jesus taught us by his teachings and his miracles and his way of life that each one of us is special and that we're here on earth together to help each other and make God's presence real. There was an important line in the second reading that we heard. It was, we walk by faith, not by sight, which means that Though we have wonderful senses, we can see, we can hear, we can touch, there's something more to life that we know is real by our faith. And our faith is not some sort of leap in the dark, but rather involves our total selves, our thinking, our experiences, our feelings, um, our faith tradition, and our history. And we see all things through the eyes of God. So we see this beautiful planet that's been entrusted uh, to us as being the work and gift of the Creator, and we are called to care for it. But each one of us also is called to be uh, uh, like a guardian angel to others, to be a presence of God. In a few moments, we're going to sing the beautiful hymn of St. Francis, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. And we pray that each one of us will be instruments of God's peace. So again, children, going back to our Qumra, every time we do something good, every time we say a prayer, every time that we reach out to help people, it's like planting a seed or a small twig of a Qumra. And we know that the fruits and the blessings will come. We won't see them immediately always, but in time we never know what happens. Let's stand now and pick up our hymn sheets as we profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We place our prayers before the Lord, praying for ourselves and the needs of our world. Let us pray for the church, that we will be sowers of God's presence, working to make the kingdom of God a reality in our time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the vulnerable of our city. On these cold winter days, may we be mindful of those who live on our city's streets and those who struggle to make ends meet. May we be generous in our response to their plight. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for Pope Francis, that he may be courageous in his leadership of the church. May he inspire people to live compassionate and just lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that these pandemic days may be an opportunity to reassess our lives and reflect on all that is truly important in our world. From our care of each other to good stewardship of the environment, May we live life more gratefully and respectfully. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the peoples of Samoa, that they may know stability and certainty politically, and the people of Fiji, as they work to overcome the COVID outbreak. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those who mourn loved ones who have died. May our faith sustain us in hope, and may those who have died know the loving embrace of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, we place all our prayers before you, spoken and unspoken. In your wisdom and great love, hear and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the loving Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and saints we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Patrick, our Bishop, Michael, his auxiliary, the clergy, and all who serve you. We remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. We pray for all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, 
and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let us stand. And children, you might like to open your hands up like this very ancient way of praying as we pray the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. De deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. O God, at this reception of your Holy Communion foreshadows the union of the faithful anew. So may it bring about unity in your Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. One of the great hymns of our prayer tradition here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, is the hymn to Mary that Bishop Pompelia uh, wrote for us. So let us stand uh, together and sing the first verse of Mo Maria.
Again, to our friends who are at home participating in this Mass, uh, an honour for us to be able to pray with you today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Three, two.